The Chevrolet sail. It's supposed to be relatively small on the outside, but big and spacious on the inside. So should we go and check that out? Let's go and check it out now. Well, the square and boxy shape on the outside really does translate into a lot of room on uh, the inside. And as you can see, headroom is uh, really generous, even for my height, which for reference is 5'10". And uh, legroom is also pretty good. And uh, do remember that this is, at the end of the day, a premium hatchback and not a big car, but it can take on some mid-sizes for sheer space at the back. And the seats themselves offer a lot of support, a good amount of cushioning as well. And the backrest angle is very good. And uh, even the width of these seats is good. Also, the good part is that because uh, the floorboard is very, very flattish, whoever sitting in the middle has got plenty of uh, place to keep his feet at. So there'll be no struggle with the co-passengers for uh, leg room or uh, even shoulder room because this is generally a wide car at the back. So overall, a good place to be in the back seat of the sail hatchback. Well, so here I am inside the front seats now of the sail hatchback and uh, as you can see, headroom is uh, pretty good and uh, there's a good amount of uh, cushioning from the seats as well. In terms of practicality, it's a pretty decent place because you get uh, one cup holder over here and there's one over here also which you can share with the passengers at the back. And there's a big tray over here where you can of course uh, keep your wallet and cell phone and uh, other such small items. Well, there's also a tray over here right above the glove box where of course you can keep coins and pens and pencils and stuff like that, small uh, items. Well, there's also a bit of a tray over here where you can of course uh, keep that toll card, it's a flat surface. Adding to the practicality of course are the big uh, door bins and uh, they can generally house that uh, big one litre bottle in them. And uh, in terms of the overall cabin quality, it's pretty good. It's at par with most of its rivals. Well, the only big annoying factor inside this cabin is the fact that the power window buttons are placed right over here in the middle in front of the gear lever. And that can get annoying when you are on the move because uh, the gear lever can get in the way of your operating them. And also for initial users who are used to them on the usual position at the door pads, it can be a bit of an issue because there's no power window button for the co-passenger on the door pad. Well, in terms of equipment, again, it's a bit of a mixed bag because, of course, you do get uh, two airbags and ABS in this top uh, model. You also get Bluetooth connection uh, for your stereo and telephone connectivity. Unfortunately, there's no steering mounted controls for the audio. And that really is, again, an oversight from Chevrolet and something that they really need to address on this car to make it more friendly and practical. Well, on the plus side, the seats are very comfortable. They are very generous in terms of cushioning and they're very long as well as wide. So even for uh, heavier passengers who are a little uh, bit on the higher side in terms of weight like me, these seats are very comfortable and uh, very substantial for those long journeys. Uh, the dashboard and the gauges are very simple in terms of their design. So some people might not really find them very stylish, but on the plus side, it's very easy to operate, it's very intuitive to operate and everything really falls easily at hand. Well, so as you can see, it's a very nice and roomy cabin, but how big is the boot? Let's find that out now. Well, the sails boxy shape on the outside really translates into a very, very big boot. And as you can see, it's a nice and well-shaped boot. It's a very square boot, which means that you can, of course, uh, heave in that heavy luggage. There's a bit of a loading lip, but it should not really be too much of a problem because, of course, it's a deep boot and if you are not happy with this and want to increase the capacity even further, you can of course flip the backrest of the seats down and just give me a second to show you how you can do that. And as you can see, it's a very flat loading area and that means is that whatever luggage you have, whatever uh, big suitcases you have, you can just slide them across and uh, just give me a second and I'll demonstrate that to you now. Well, so here's a pretty big uh, piece of luggage and uh, all you need to do is just push it in and it goes all the way. Well, so as you can see, this sail hatchback's boot can actually genuinely rival a lot of compact MPVs when it comes to luggage carrying capacity. But of course, if you want to use those uh, back seats properly, if you really want to have five passengers and still load luggage, I'll just show you how much it can take by putting in these suitcases. Well, as you can see, two large pieces of suitcases fit quite easily and there's still place left to put another two of the same size. And that really goes to show you what a great luggage carrying capacity this car really has. Well, so here I am driving the sail hatchback and uh, this car comes with 
a petrol and a diesel motor well today we've got the 1.3 uh, diesel engine for you now this of course is the same engine which also goes into uh, the maruti swift and it's a very popular choice with a lot of buyers the good thing about this engine of course is its fuel efficient nature and uh, the sale gives you 22.1 uh, kpl which is of course ARAI tested figures well where this engine also really does excel is in the fact that it has a very very punchy and uh, solid mid-range and all you need to do is just slot it around 2000 rpm and uh, 4000 rpm and this engine delivers a solid wave of torque and that really does propel uh, this car forward in a very very fantastic manner well another strong point about uh, this diesel engine of course is the fact that it's a very refined and uh, quiet engine and what that means is that even when you are really revving it hard and you really are pushing the car on that highway trip it doesn't really become uh, noisy or very buzzy inside the cabin and that really adds to the strength of the sail. Well the sail also has a very comfortable ride, it really does have a very absorbing ride and uh, what that means is that uh, small speed breakers and potholes in the city are taken care of, it really does not let anything filter into the cabin. Well the sail also has a lot of maturity about itself when you uh, take it out on the highway, it really does uh, feel very reassuring. Well and even though the steering does tend to become a little light, that does not take away from the fact that this car has one of the most reassuring and stable rides in this category. Well, where the sale cannot uh, match up its rivals is in the fact that uh, it doesn't really have a very engaging driving experience and it doesn't really have a very uh, keen steering wheel. There's a lot of body roll as well as a lot of body lean and uh, that along with this woolly steering doesn't really make it a keen driver's car. But even though it's not really a keen driver's car, that should not really make it a deal breaker because I mean, how often do you take it out on a track? or push it around corners. Well, the Chevrolet Sail hatchback might have a few niggling issues, but they should not really make you stay away from this car because it has a lot of plus points as well. It comes with a very, very roomy cabin, a large boot, and a very, very refined, peppy, and fuel-efficient diesel engine. Well, being a Chevrolet also means that you can haggle at a dealership and get a good discount, making it a good value car. And all that means is that this car might not be a sensational product, but it really is a sensible one.